Hello YouTube, this has been Yesel. Um So yeah, I've just been... Uh, some of my thoughts I've had recently have been perhaps a little bit more intense. Um, I'm going to try to mention some of these to you guys and great to get some feedback on some of these uh, topics I'll be talking about um, tonight and soon. Other things. Um, so I've been thinking about... Um, my college, undergraduate college, uh, music experience and things. And I went to Brigham Young University, Tacoma Community College, and uh, Central Washington University. And I won't get into all the reasons why I went that way. And, you know, basically, okay. This is going to go a few different directions, um, but. So we need to bear, bear with me here. But there's a lot of things about these kinds of topics I'm not going to talk about right now. I'm only going to zero in on, uh, for this video, um, music. Right? Just, just when I was doing musically. And what I benefited from, what it helped me grow. Maybe also what I could have done a bit more of sometimes to become a little bit stronger musician, at least at the time, was later. And of course, the things that didn't go so well. Now, I have a video that just kind of goes into more the subject in kind of a class-to-class -class basis, or kind of a what what's worthwhile. Um, this one's this 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 though this video is going to get more into uh, things like oh I don't know attitudes and um, you know, professor expectations for professors and different uh, reasons to feel um, excluded or or the opposite in music school. Um, it's going to get more into, just I guess maybe a little, bit, a little deeper, I think, I suppose. Yeah, it's going to go a little deeper in, term, in terms of um, the worth of at least the experience I haven't had in two different for, uh, full universities and one community college. So, you know, tell you the truth, community college is the way to go for getting all of general ed done. It really is. For what you, how much it costs. It's, it's, it's what more people should be doing all the time. Um, general ed classes in full and four-year universities, and, you know, big universities are really kind of a pain sometimes. Um, I, I think it, you know, across the board, there should be much more unified, I should say, difficulty level, uh, expected from classes, and, and it should keep, the, there should be a pro more gradual progression from junior high to high school to college in terms of the workload and what's expected of students and that sort of thing. I suppose that's a little bit different subject, I suppose. Basically, college is a shock to many, of course. So, I mean, okay. It's really easy at times in life, especially, you know, for different people it's different things, but it's really, it can be very easy to, uh, well, I wouldn't say easy, but I know, I know the kinds of thought processes personally that can cause someone to neglect their responsibilities at times. Um, we're not just talking about music. You know, we're just talking about anything that takes effort. It can, you know, I, know, I know I'm very familiar with those the thought processes that goes into just not doing that, just cutting it all out and doing, you know, sometimes what, whatever you want to do. Uh, continually, with no other things involved in life. What's life? Now, if you don't have to do anything else, than what you want to do, and that goes for a long time, awesome, wow, awesome, <laughs> you know, that's what you want to do, but it needs to be the case that you have no other, no responsibilities for quite some time, uh, no, no pressing things that you have to do, no recurring things, no, no jobs, no. if you have enough income, or you have enough saved up, I don't, gosh, that's a great way to go about things for a while, absolutely, just lose track of time, 
idyllic to me. Um, but you'd probably be about some of the things that you you would want to, to do. For me, it would definitely be the composition and creative writing. Two two endeavors, probably maybe some little bit of painting as far as other kinds of things like that. Definitely other things, but but um, college is very busy. You know, very busy, 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 busy. And sometimes because of that busyness, what's the most important thing that one needs to do when when is an undergraduate? Um, try to figure out their career, right? But when you're so busy, that's one of the things that flies in the face sometimes of knowing that you know what you're going to be doing, what you're going to do. Do professors help you the way that they really ought to? Depends. It's not always their not always their fault if they don't help you as much as maybe they ought to or you think they ought to. But you know, they are imperfect men and women, right? They try to help, but they definitely don't always know what it is that you really are to be best at. Or they because they do something at a very high level, and they maybe see you in a similar light, they hope that you're going to do that same thing that they did. It's not going to be the case a lot of times. And you can try to please them, but... But if that's what you want to do, if, it, if the professor you have, that's the main professor, that you know, your, your, your mentor or your main guy that you, you, know, you talk to in your major that you choose, if what he's doing at a grad level is exactly what you want to do, awesome. Awesome. You know, but that's what, you know, and certainly as a, for a grad degree, that's the first thing you look for is who is doing what I want to do. And a lot of times it's less expensive, sometimes it's more expensive, sometimes yeah, it just takes a lot of fun. But there's a lot of fluff, right? There's all those classes. There's all these things that some old guy thinks that yeah, we all have to take, right? And there's, there's videos on YouTube about um, things that go much in more depth than that, I would say. Things that go more in depth about. Mm, oh man. <laughs> Ponzi schemes, right? The college is kind of like a Ponzi screen. Uh, you know, it's this offer of getting a great job after you graduate. But you end up saying it's spending a lot of money. Sometimes you don't see something good for a long time. So the argument, I was always arguing to, well, what's the point then? There's a lot of the more um, obvious appealing things about college, but there's just a lot of people that don't always have the best, the right idea for you, whether it's parents, even or whoever that's helping you be in this college situation right off the bat. You know, it, there's a lot, again, again, a lot of people that are going to try to pressure you to go one way, one way or another. Um, personally, I despise professors that uh, uh, try to manipulate a student to, to do something that they really didn't want to do in the first place. Try to convince a student, in this case music, to um, they, you know, really should write like this, right? Or write like that. It's more music composition I'm looking at. But, um, you know, I despise that kind of way of thinking because it's not the professor's choice what a student, which way a student will go after their undergrad experiences. It's one thing to expect a student to um, write avant-garde music if they're taking composition at many universities, if they're going to take that class. It's one thing to expect that, which is reasonable, I suppose, as long as that student knows what they're getting into. As long as they're up for it, as long as they know what it's about, and as long as, as long as there's a lot of a lot, as long as right, and there's a lot of criticism of the way that things are done, of course. But the thing is, is that um, you know, some a lot of students are just looking to just write, get some experience writing, and they have a lot of questions that are often never answered, not answered fully, and. Um, Professor, you know, I just, 
professor has no interest in helping a student find their real voice, right? They say, oh, it's a big thing to help a composer find their voice. Well, their voice may well be very tonal. It may, it may be very uh, film oriented, or maybe be very video game oriented, or maybe these certain composers will be a better fit to have a student really immerse themselves into the music of certain composers than certain other composers. And you don't have to look at it from just an avant-garde versus traditional tonal music. You can look at it from all different kinds of tonal music and say, you know, so many of these composers, they're not going to write like Mozart or Haydn. They're going to write like, I don't know, uh, Elgar or Ravel or something. Or John Williams, right? Professors just are really sometimes very full of themselves. They're very full of themselves. And I, I don't need to tell you that. There's all kinds of people that could say that same thing. So hopefully their, their knowledge is something that, you know, that they can give us about, you know, teach us things that we didn't know about, educate us in music history and music theory and um, music aesthetics. And, you know, and of course there's the, like, the skill, more skill oriented things like music performance and conducting and, and composition, amongst other subjects, you know, that are music, uh, music methods, different instruments and that sort of thing, and, you know, I don't know, lots of other kinds of things, like, but, um, see, the thing is that they, they, again, there's the knowledge-based type classes, knowledge-based, right, knowledge, and kind of skill kind of classes in music. The other two that are combined in music degrees. And um, you, you really want a very, 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 very capable musician, to say the least, when they're done with their bachelor's degree, even if they're just teachers. Or even for music minors, you want that to mean something, right? So I definitely am for high standards. But what does that mean sometimes? Well, you know, there's a lot of things that go into tonal music, for instance, that make tonal music just as advanced, and just as worthwhile, not more so, in my opinion, than avant-garde music. And um, a professor does a student a disservice in the case of composition when, again, they don't answer a student's questions, or they don't help them try to find, you know, they don't try to have, you know, have know what's going on before they graduate. You don't say, hey, you might, might try this, try that, here's this person's number. How often does that happen you know, in colleges with professors? Hopefully it's changing. Hopefully it's different than it used to be. Um, yeah, a lot of people learn on their own. And, you know, I mean, uh, yeah. So, you know, sometimes I have these dreams about college. And they might mean different things. I think I often know what they mean. But if it's again, it's musically oriented. Uh, I did a lot of playing, played a lot of horn. Uh, we, we were required to be in, band, in a marching band at Central Washington for a while. We used to be involved in the band program. Um, played a lot of small ensembles. Uh, played in orchestras. You know, I did a lot of playing. Even a little bit of singing, even at BYU, I did you know some a little bit of band, but a choir, um, and all actually paid off. There's a lot of playing though, but it's it paid off. It pays off in more the long term, um, but it also pays off immediately in terms of you know your your playing, what you can do. But it, you know private lessons really are often a, a big a very big deal in music, especially of course if you're a performance major. That means everything. The ensemble you're in, what you're playing, uh, somewhat is challenging enough. <laughs> it offers the right challenges, experience in doing different things, and your private lessons. And everything else, man, it's so secondary to that. If you're a performance major, if you're a composition major, though, it's a very different matter. And, um, you know, it's the question of how well your music theory classes help you write music. Um, and it should, it should help you write music. If it doesn't, what point is it? So, you know, this is a familiar train of thought where I've had performers, music performance majors, and people just mention their abhorrence of music theory. Or their, you know, what's, what, what point to it? There's no point to it. Well, that's because of the way it's taught. 
and it's because it's so abstract, so um, detached from the actual process of creating music. You want what you learn in that respect to be tied directly into not only writing music, but understanding it at a very, very deep level. If it doesn't do that, it's true, it starts to become kind of meaningless. Right? You want to skip classes, right? <sighs> so, um, just, you know, talking about with college music programs, for the most part, a lot of a lot of them that are in charge of the curriculum. They're old fuddy duddies, right? They are. It makes a lot of sense to me why some people maybe drop out of college. Or maybe they don't finish the degrees. Maybe they're very confused about those things. That all needs to go bye bye. We know we know those of us who have studied music more seriously, whether we have grad degrees or not, it's too expensive, right? Those of us who have studied music for a while, you know, a long time, and maybe we've worked in music, you know. Uh, for a while. We, I think you guys have a lot of thoughts in this regard. We would just want it to be worth the money that people are paying for it, right? You want it to be worth the money. You, you know, I mean... Right? It's, it's the... There's a whole, a whole bunch of people that criticize the humanities and philosophy degrees and all that stuff. Well, essentially we're talking about music degrees. We're talking about, especially with the knowledge base, and always taking all these classes, right, that are kind of regular classes, I don't always see the payoff with those classes. I, I do, but I don't. It's something where, gosh, if you haven't retained that knowledge that you had and hopefully gained in music theory and history, et cetera, et cetera, or chamber music or whatever, if you haven't retained it or if you don't even have your notes, gosh, I mean, the only thing you have to show for that class is some letter grade, hopefully it's a decent one, and transcript. Other than that, it's all out of there. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, with your, your English majors that might feel, I understand what I'm talking about here, and hopefully you've got, you, you've, you've actually learned, right? Hopefully you've actually learned in college. Hopefully you didn't just cram. And I think there's probably a small percentage, hopefully a small percentage of classes that a lot of folks cram or, you know, but uh, it's not wise to cram for all of your classes, whether it's general ed. General ed, I can understand that. I mean, that's just real headache, which is why I recommend community college. You know. uh, sometimes for those things, or just taking all the AP classes you can in high school. So, um, because yeah, I'll make them kind of torture a little bit. <laughs> they call things college. Some colleges. So. It's just um, okay. Getting into the more of me, what I'm talking about. Yeah, again, professors don't. They try to figure things out. You know, if they're a good, if they're a good professor, they'll try to figure out things about their students as they should. Right? And uh, sometimes they kind of hit, they hit a brick wall, so they they can't do anything. You know, they can't. They're not sure what to do. And they want to show that. They don't want to show that the decision, right? There are a lot of professors that are very, you know, if a professor is a professor, they're about the obviously, you know, extremely high level of what they, whatever they're doing. Right? But, but that's only in what, you know, this, this little area that they actually studied at a high level, right? Or a higher level. You can't expect a 60 year old. You can't expect a 60 year old to be able to help a college freshman, sophomore, in what they want to do for the career any more than a professor's in their 40s or 30s or whatever. I mean, the age isn't always going to help if you don't. If you, if you, have, if you have a professor who's a performer, and he has a student who's going to turn out to be a composer, for instance. Being a teacher maybe is a little bit easier of a jump for a lot of professors, but maybe. But um, yeah, if, if you you don't get that, if you don't get that student right, and unfortunately there's not too many not too many directions you can go in music. If you don't 
you know, I'm talking, I know I'm talking professors here, but if you don't really, um, blow off their questions, you know, maybe you could try, if, if, you know, you know when something's outside of your expertise, and so maybe you can try sending them in certain directions, the students will eventually find simulator at some point, you know, hopefully they're, People they want to you know, really, really learn. What does they really, really want to learn? So, you know, you know I, the, uh, this whole process should be easier. It really should. And um, you know, obviously, I don't want professors to lose money because the curriculum changes, and you have, you know, the classes, that the numbers of students they taught to dwindle because of the changing curriculum. I don't know if I really necessarily want that, but what I want is for again for a degree, music degree, amongst every other kind of degree, to be more worthwhile, right, for students. So the days of this impartial thing, right, that the way professors are, um, hopefully that's on the way out. It's not effective, right? Colleges need accountability. I read something recently about a, a professor in Japan, for instance, um, this is a little different subject, but if you, you know, I'm not naive anymore when it comes to colleges. I know that there's corruption in colleges. I know that there's people play favorites and there's politics and things that are involved and these little, these little infightings and things. And that's stupid, right? But why keep that information from students who want to be professors? Or why keep that even if they're students in general? Well, you want to maintain this idea that the department is very professional, right? Well, you're all just people, right? We're all just people. Um, those of us who have good moral qualities about ourselves, we are very disciplined, we bind our P's and Q's, right? We carry ourselves in such a way that we can be called, considered more professional. But ultimately, you know, Once you find out what happens in these colleges and how they market and they spend all this money to bring in all these students and then they're trying to pack this, but when you find out, oh, there's a financial interest, you know, a lot of times in different things in the college, and it affects education sometimes in a negative way, oftentimes in a negative way. Um, I don't need to tell you about the, the colleges that are unethical. There's Phoenix University in this regard. You have, the, you have a bunch of bogus classes and you don't learn a darn thing. <laughs> and so it's a total waste of money. <clears throat> okay. I think I've made my, my point by this point. I can, talk, make, make, I can make other videos in the future about this very same subject. But, um, you know, there's a lot of deception goes on in colleges and you know just suck right to them it's professors that hold their grades over you right I can grade you I can give you an F or, or they ignore you you're brushed off because you're a freshman sophomore you miss some classes and they're not they can't give you a call at your res, you know, dorm, I guess, but, but they are hard-nosed and they don't really know what's going on. This, this kind of thing is, you know, college isn't, is not what it should be. What should it be? It should train you to be what you want to be. It should. But if, you know, there are things going on with different students, well, what should be done? Things that don't fit with the environment of the protocol or whatever, the culture of the college. You know? Does it mean going to a different college? Maybe. You think that that college in the first place would probably try to communicate with that student regarding what, would, what to expect in crystal clear terms. They don't do that because they're after what? 
Oh, they're after money a lot of times. And they don't always fully understand a student. Who, you know, who does? An incoming student, there's so many students that are coming in. I, I, I thought at one time that interviews would be a good idea, but I guess there's, you know, the human factor, right? It's the human factor. It's just brushed off. And then even after college, when a lot of people find training have a hard time finding work, what happens? Well, a lot of these employers, are they going to be better or worse than colleges? And a lot of work is very, is very uh, not desirable. You don't want to have it. So it shouldn't work for a long time, very long time, but uh, business, private sector. Of course, a lot of times, say for instance, retail, it's all about the money, right? Again, money. So for some people, when, when you know, when, when are things right? I don't know. If you have a certain kind of personality that really, really, really super, clicks super well with something, great. But a lot of people don't. There's nothing wrong with them in that sense. It's, it's just kind of the, you know, some of us are not interested in Well, anyway, I think you know what I'm talking about again. Okay, leave me your thoughts and comments below. I'll catch you guys later. Yes, bye.